computer. There we go, we're recording. So I just want to welcome you all again to the Firecatchers classroom going deeper in worship. We're going to open in prayer and then dive right in. So dear Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you have given us a passion that we share uh, to, to worship your name, to connect with you, to go deep with you, and that we have this supportive group. I thank you for technology and how we are able to, from East Coast to West Coast to, uh, to Southeast Asia and around the world, that we are able to connect um, for this one moment and, and to receive your word. So Lord, um, I ask that you would, that the words that you would have them hear, that they would hear, and that would be nothing of me in it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So as I was preparing this, I, I, I haven't taught this for a while. And I, as I normally do, I start with, with uh, going to the scripture, to the scripture. I start, I start, start in prayer, go to the scripture, and then I kind of look to see what kind of resources that I've collected. Uh, as a teacher, I collect resources from all sorts of stuff. And as I'm looking at some of the things that I have, and I'm like, wow, this is really, really great. And <laughs> that moment you realize I wrote that. <laughs> much earlier. So I'm not saying that it's really awesome. I'm just saying that the Lord has been on it before. <laughs> so um, I, I, I was like, this was, it was, it, it was refreshing to me all over again. And, and uh, hi, you're coming in as Dan. Is that your name? Can you talk to, can you talk to her, Rosie? Just by message. Okay. Welcome. We see you coming in. And uh, so I'm just going to carry on. Okay. Hang on. Uh, so you're coming in as Dan, and I'm just going to mute you. How do I do that? Mute. There we go. All right. Back on track. Um, so this, this is probably the crux of, of my worship message uh, or of my flagging message is all about, it's all about worship. And uh, so we have, I mean, the, the heart of what we do is worship. There's corporate worship and private worship. We're going to probably, although all of us are flaggers and are interested in flagging, I'm, I'm not even going to really touch on flagging. It's before we even get to the public display of what we're doing, there's a, an importance that we need to have a private worship. And when I've, when I've had flag teams before and I teach them, I said, if you're not a private worshiper, you should not be a public worshiper. It flows out of what you are and what you do right from, from, I mean, right at the core of who you are. And so if we don't understand what this worship is and what it is that we're doing, then I think that we need to get, we need to get real with ourselves first and start there. And then before we're starting to release, because as public, like even, in, even if we're worshiping in the back, because we are so conspicuous, there's an, it's impossible to be inconspicuous with flags. Um, just, it's just not possible. It, people are drawn to it. So, so, it's very evident um, what is coming out of you actually will come out. And so we really want to come into that deeper place. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the deeper worship. And worship, it's multi-sensory. This is what's beautiful about how the creative arts are, are flowing in our generation today. I grew up and the only way that you could express worship or the acceptable or, or the, the only way that was acknowledged was just through song. And God is so much more creative than that. He's, he's, there's, there's art and there's sculpture and there's um, flags and there's multimedia and there's um, computer digital graphic. Like it's just, it's just incredible. And we can really experience worship with all of our senses. So the, how do we do this? Okay. So a lot of Christians or many Christians, they would understand praise, but less understand actually worship. And so um, open forum, let's open it up. How would you 
uh, describe praise versus worship? It's a question and you can answer. I think they're one and the same. To steal a really good line from a really good friend, praise leads to worship and worship makes me praise. <laughs> that was, it was so good. <laughs> And I had never felt like that before until you said that, to be honest, Andrea, because I, I had a sense of one or the other, as you had mentioned. And uh, I think for me, I categorize it, you know, congregationally, you know, praises where everybody's, you know, jamming and we're breaking through to the third heaven and all those crazy languages. And worship was that, you know, very somber, just... The audience of one and, and worshiping, but I I have opted out of that concept now. Yeah. Anybody else have some thoughts? Okay. So uh, I was carrying. So I think. Okay, yes, I, I do I, actually. Oh. Okay, Julie. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself fast enough. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say is I. Um, I wanted to add that when I grew up in, um, Catholic upbringing, I learned that praise is only something that I do when something good happens. Like if, you know, God answers a, a prayer that I've been, um, asking him for and worship is only something that I would do like in the church when music is playing usually at the beginning of a church service. So I don't see it like that anymore, but that's interesting that I grew up with that kind of a viewpoint that there was a big difference and like only certain times and so forth of those things. Yeah, okay, so by show of hands, that's a good, by show of hands, who, um, who grew up in churches where where the worship or the the praise was the fast songs and the worship was the the slow songs? So you'd have like in a yeah, Kim. Like I, I grew up in a church where it was three songs, two fast songs, and then the worship song, slow and com contemplative, right before the sir, the message. Which is that's the only reason we all gathered at church was for to hear the sermon so the whole service centered around the sermon as opposed to the worship and so i think that that's what why that's why we have um the the praise and worship kind of defined this way um and i so i just I actually did look at the definitions of praise and worship and praise is the definition is an act of expressing approval or admire, admiration condemnation and the offering of a grateful homage in words or song to express approval or admiration so in one sense uh rosie you and i were talking yesterday i do think that praise leads to worship and worship leads to praise I don't think you can actually step it's it's harder to separate it as I've kind of gotten into more of the lifestyle of worship however and we praise God for what he does the Bible says that God never sleeps and he's always working so there is always something to praise him for and then again you see that what he's what he's doing that all immediately leads into into worship so in Lamentations 322 it says the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease Philippians 1 6 for I'm confident of this very thing that he who began a very good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ so in your life he is always at work there's something to always praise him for and we're actually going to get into into some of that uh, an exercise that will help us kind of foster these these 
this practice of of praising every day understanding he's always at work he is he never sleeps there's always something that's going on john 5 27 but he answered them my father is working until now and i myself am working so we have we have the father working we have jesus working he's he's doing what the father is doing and then we have holy holy spirit that is always at work uh, around us in us and around us as well so there's always something to praise him for our problem is that we fail to notice or we don't like what he's doing because it's painful or we don't understand it we don't have the whole picture and so we hold back our praise it's almost like a punishment and and um and perhaps i'm the only one and and you can i hope that i am the only one that i think i didn't like that so i'm not going to praise have you ever been in a church service that it, uh, for a song that you don't like and you say no i'm not going to worship to that one i just i'm going to fold my hands and not worship because i'm not going to enter into that because and <laughs> how arrogant is that thought like i've had that in uh, just I want a little side story we used to have this in this in the church that i was going to we would um god is good song i was, not, I was just I was so tired and I was sick and tired of that song. I'm like crying out loud. That song was like five years ago. It's been on the playlist every Sunday. Can we not sing a new song? And I had such a bad attitude around this song. And so I was at Bethel. Um, and this was during the time, the season where at Bethel they had, I, I was going to Bethel a lot at that time. And they, there was glory clouds and I would always miss the glory clouds. So glory clouds is when they had, uh, for a season of time, they were having gold flecks that were coming down from the ceiling. You could, you could, or around, we actually didn't know where it was coming from, but it was just, it was, it was flowing. And I was having a, I was there at the church service and I was worshiping. I was just kind of lost. My eyes were closed and they started playing this song that I did not like this like old song. Like now Bethel doesn't, it wasn't even a Bethel music song. It wasn't a song that I've ever heard them sing before. And I'm like, are you kidding me, Lord? They're playing this song. I was so annoyed in this, in this, in this really submitted heart of worship that I thought I had up to that moment. I'm like, oh, and then the, and then I, the glory cloud came during that song. And God said, he's like, I like this song. So I've stopped, stopped saying I don't like that song. In fact, I like this song. So, I, But oh my goodness, the Lord, he will rebuke me quite strongly in that sense. So he just put his, his, his stamp of approval on that. So he's always at work and there's always something to praise him for. But worship now is worship is a little bit different than praise. Um, according to the definitions, it says to render religious reverence and homage to feel an adoring reverence or regard for any person or thing. So there, we're, we're praising for something. We are making a, a commendation for something. You have to do something to get praise. But the worship is it's a religious reverence it's it's it is more contemplative so i can so i understand why churches would do you know the fast songs are praise and the worship you, you start to move into a contemplative frame of mind before you come and so i like the way actually bill johnson says we praise god for who he what he does and we worship god for who he is but as you move into deeper worship those things flow one to another all the time and and it becomes very hard to distinguish where one ends and one starts and they and the circle keeps going around and around and around so one of the things that i i've heard and i chuck pierce actually says this and this is the one thing that i disagree with what he says is that he says that we were created to worship god and i i don't agree that we were created to worship god and i'll explain that Think it's only partially correct we were created to know god and to know god is to worship him so the worship is the fruit of knowing god 
if you don't know God, you can't worship. And so you can, so you can come around it from a circle, but I, but I think that it's, I think it's more accurate to say that we are created to know God. So you cannot, here's the crux of what we're going to be talking about. You cannot worship what you don't know. And worship, like love, it has to be freely given. It has to be freely given. Otherwise, it's not authentic or sincere. Worship, it's an internal response to knowing God. It's the heart response towards him. And it goes back um, all of to when the Israelites were... I love the story. I, I spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, and I really love um, the the Exodus portion. And when they started taking the, the Promised Land, I really love those scriptures, those passages, because I I love the heart of God in it all. And it's not in the curses and in the it's in the, such the faithfulness. Can you hear the train? Such is the the nature of Him, and it and it has. He's as kind in the Old Testament as he is in the New Testament uh, and the New Covenant is what we understand because what he wanted, now the, it, the Israelites, the Hebrews had been in captivity for 400 years. <laughs> Debbie's cat wants to get in on this as well. <laughs> the, and they, they didn't know him. All they knew was slavery. All they knew was oppression. All they knew was being being cast down and being less um, less in this in the society where they were and God said to Moses when he called Moses I will be with you and he's Moses so the I'm not going to go back into how Moses got called but he says I will be with you and this is the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt you will worship God on this mountain and I think that that's kind of, that is the crux of everything that God has done, that you will worship, like he will, you will know who he is and you will worship. When we, this, the scripture, that's Exodus 3.12, that when you have brought the people out, you, this is a sign that you, it is, that you know it is I who have sent you. You will worship God. And I think it's incredibly powerful to say that's why he brought them out, not so that they could worship, so that they could know him. So does he need worship? Yes, no. I don't, I, I don't he's complete. He doesn't need worship. I don't think he needs the worship. Um, but he, he, that we worship the fact that we worship um again it comes back to we worship what we know we can't we can't worship what we don't know and so when he says worship me that's the invitation is to know me come in and know me so when he was saying to the israelites when when you have brought them out he's giving them a future agenda he wanted to restore the people to himself. So when he's saying to, I, there was a period of time um, when I was in, it, I was in worship, I was in leadership actually at a church where I didn't understand the concept of worship or praise at all. And the Lord said to me, and this, you know, step aside from what you're doing and worship me. And I'm like, I, um, uh, what, um, oh, okay. Like, but I, but I really floundered for a year because I didn't understand what he was asking. I didn't understand that it was an invitation to actually know him. So I went about it in the way that I knew how, and I, I went, I studied the scripture, which is, that's a great, it's, it, it that's the way that it's a, it's a way to know God for sure. And, but I was learning about God. And we'll see in the people, they said um, their response to, no, my notes, you should have seen my notes this morning. My notes, I lost it. But uh, the note said, 
when they actually got to the mountain, the people says, no, we don't want to worship. They were afraid of, of God. They hadn't actually captured his heart. They said to Moses, you go, you worship and we'll listen to you. And at that, that's actually when the point when, when the Lord separated them, that's when they, that's when they got the law. So until that point, they actually had an open invitation to come right into the very presence of God. And they said, no, no, we want to know about you. We don't want to know you. And that's essentially what it, what they were saying. And I know that that's what my heart was saying for a long time. I didn't know God. I wanted to know about God. And so often I think in some of our, our Christian churches, um, churches that love that love God, they, they actually teach more about God than they teach to know God. And, and so uh, it's not that he needs to have the validation of our worship, but he does, because he's complete, he's complete in himself, but he rescued them so that they could know him. And so the, and so there was this, this distinction. Now, what we have in the new covenant with Christ is that I love the way that uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Hels Helser, uh, just look, that, he's, that you are as close to me as my breath, that, that he's inside of us. And that's the covenant that we have, that Christ in us, is that that covenant is so close that we don't have to go. We don't have to go. He comes to us as he's always been. But this, there's no barrier. There's no law that there's the barrier because we can now come freely say, yeah, actually, I want to know you. And so that's, that's our going deeper. So when we start, think about the going deeper, and um, we're going to kind of move into some time. So if you've got your Bible, I'm going to, we're going to look at a couple, a few passages, and then we're going to get into the names of God. And this is, um, as you know, so Catch the Fire Worship Flags has been, uh, had, has had the names of God collection. I, I think that it is the, the most significant collection of flags that I have ever created. And it's not perhaps because they're the most beautiful or the most, it is because um, it is the intimate knowledge of God in, in each of these names of God. And that's, that's kind of where this entire training has, has teaching has started. That's where my heart started was I need to know the names of God. I need to know who he is intimately because that's how we're going to go deeper. We're not going to go deeper um, by learning about, but we have to learn to know him. And so we're going to kind of get into that a little bit more, but if you've got your, do you have Bibles? You got a phone? If you don't, I'm going to read, I'm going to read it. Um, I just want, I'm going to, excuse me. I got to get my old, I have, so I list, I read the, the passion for the most part, um, but it doesn't have the Old Testament and we're going to spend, we're going to have one verse in the Old Testament. So I'm just going to get that. Hang on. All right. So let's look at first John 4, 23 and 24. I'm going to read it and then we're going to have, and then Phil, please unmute yourself. And let's, let's have a discussion around this. Andrea, could you say that scripture verse again? Uh, John 4, 23 and 24. So from the Passion, it says, uh, From here on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and truth. So from that verse, give me a second to look it up yourself too. What is he looking for? Those who will worship in spirit and in truth. That's what they'll do, but the heart of it, he's actually just looking for worshipers, right? Looking for someone that will just know him. God used to always, Jesus used to always convict me. Every time I went to bed, he would always say, you don't know me. You don't know me. 
all the time. That's as I'm going to bed. You don't know me. You don't know me. You need to get to know me. And so I started to get to know him. And I think that God's saying, you know, you don't need to go to church to worship me. You don't need to go to the temple. You don't need to go to that mountain or this mountain. You need to worship me from your heart. And I'm looking for your heart. I'm not looking for where you're sitting at. And that's kind of what I think Jesus was trying to say to her. Because she's sitting there saying, well, our, you know, our priest says we need to go over here to worship. And you guys say you need to go over there. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 you don't get it. I don't want you going over here. I don't want you going over there. I want you looking in your heart. And I want you to know me as God and as a loving being that's going to take care of you. And I want you to know me as God and your friend and your salvation and your supplier and all. Mm -hmm. At least that's what he's taught me. <laughs> and, and Kim, would you say, so when he says, uh, when he says, um, you don't know me, he, when he, when he gives us a rebuke, like, like he said to me, get to know me. And I'm like, I don't know how it, yeah. it, it does. It's not a, a rebuke that brings condemnation. No. It's a, it's an invitation. Like he, yeah. it, there's never guilt with it. No, there never was. It was a hunger. And then God gave me this hunger and I would just sit here and go, oh, Lord, I just want more of you and I don't know how to get it. <laughs> and that was always my prayer. Lord, I just want more of you. And he just brings me in deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, mm -hmm. he just, he just, it's like he pulls me into him is what he's doing. But you got to give him permission. If you don't give him permission, then, you know, he can't do it. You know, it's like if you asked me to come, if it's like if I said, hey, I'll come to your house and I'll help you organize your craft room or whatever, but you never let me into your house and then you get mad at me because I'm not helping you organize your craft room. Well, honey, that's not my fault. You're not opening up the door for me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good, wow. I agree with, I agree with that. He, he will, just like the Israelites, we, we can still say, no, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm good with being on the outside, I, I teach a lot um, on the daughters of Jerusalem versus in the book of Song of Solomon, the daughters of Jerusalem versus the, the beloved. Um, and she was invited and in, she went into the bedroom chamber and the daughters of Jerusalem, the ones, the friends of, of, of her said, oh, we celebrate your love. We, we think it's great. It's, it's, but you go ahead. We're not, we're not entering into that. And the invitation is actually that we would know him so intimately in that. And that's the place of worship. Anyone else have um, a, a thought about, about just what the father's looking for in terms of our worship? I think he's looking for people that will put aside all those frustrations, issues, things that distract us and just really worship from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think he, don't you think, um, Demi, that he, that's what he wants. And then he also put, like Kim was saying, he actually puts that desire in us. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that's the work of the spirit without the spirit, we couldn't worship him. Right. Because there's an aspect of, I mean, God is spirit. It, it, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting phraseology in here is that he actually says God is spirit and we must worship in spirit and truth. We cannot, we cannot move, move ourselves into the spirit. The spirit takes us there. So it's, um, so the spirit and truth is coming in, um, worshiping in the spirit. That doesn't necessarily mean worshiping in, in tongues, it definitely can. I mean, that's a, our language in the spirit. Um, but there's so much more. And I think as we are moving into the creative arts, we're actually un unlocking other things in the spirit and how to worship in the spirit. And we have to, to truly worship God. We have to connect at that spirit level, not even at, not on the flesh level and not on the soul level. It goes even deeper to that place of, of knowing God so intimately and that's because christ in us makes us possible and the holy spirit testifies to it but any would that you agree with that disagree you just Absolutely. Disagree. yeah yeah we can't yeah. do it 
flesh and in the human nature. It's got to be a supernatural thing. And then to worship him, it really is in the fullness of who we are. We worship him in the fullness of who we are. Let's read another scripture. Um, Matthew 13, 11 to 16. Matthew, Matthew 16, 13, 11 to 16. Did uh, Maureen leave? I just missed that message. Oh, she left. Sorry, she just wrote me a, a message saying she has to go. Um, but it's midnight and she, it's, it's midnight of her Saturday night. So she's got church the next, she's got church tomorrow. Um, so, you know, bless her that she was part, participated with us. I just love technology. I just, I cannot get over how, like, where Facebook, where people are complaining about Facebook and, are you kidding me? This is the greatest technology that we have, that we are able to spread the word of the Lord far and near support. There is no reason. I mean, People in Africa have phones. They don't have bank accounts, but they have phones. <laughs> so there's, like, he's, he's connecting us. The enemy wants to pervert it, but good golly, God is good, and technology is amazing. Okay, so that was my little tirade. I love it. Um, 11 to 16, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to have, have discuss some questions. Are we? He explained, you've been given the intimate experience of insight into hidden truths and mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom, but they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart even the understanding that they think they have will be taken from them. That's why I teach the people using parables because they think they're looking for truth, yet because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. Though they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand a thing I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eyes of their heart are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and hard of hearing, and they have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear and open their minds to understand. Then they would turn to me and let me instantly heal them. So if you, if you have eyes to see, so this is for verse 11. If you have eyes to see, what's the blessing that he's giving us? Does anyone see that? Jump in. I'm not sure what you're, I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay. Um, so it's if you have eyes to see, what what blessing do we get? Well, we get blessings of God taking care of us, of God making a covenant with us, of God loving us unconditionally. You know, I grew up in an abusive home, and one of the things that the Lord always tells me is, I don't see what they saw. I don't see somebody who was annoying or somebody who upset me. I see someone who is precious and important and a treasure to me. And I think what I see personally is a loving God who loves me past what everybody else says or what everybody else saw. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it's sort of like he loves me beyond what human beings can do. He, he goes beyond that. And it's sort of like he pushes all of that aside and he says, I'm going to love you the way I, you're meant to be loved, which is through me. And to me, that's what I see personally. And I see his power working through me and I see his love and his supplying for me and taking care of me. And he's always saying, let me take care of you. 
Hmm. So I have to let him take, I have to let him take care of me. So that's what I see personally. Okay. Um, let me read verse 11 and 12 again. And let's look. He explained, you've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden truths and mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom, but they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those that do not listen with an open teachable heart or eyes that don't see, um, even the understanding they have will be taken from them. So based on that, what is the blessings that we get? Well, just learning more about him. Yes. And getting more of his kingdom. And it's just like, it's like God, God opens up the word to me to where I can understand it a lot better than someone else. And I, I have a really bad habit of thinking if I know it, then y'all know it. So I don't need to say something because you already know it. And I might say something, I lead a small group in my house and I might say something just expecting everybody to know it. And they kind of look at me like, wow, that's something new. Well, no, it's not new. You should know it already. <laughs> but you've been given, I mean, it's, in, we, we, that collectively we can share uh, in the, ex, in the experience of what we've been giving. And we, we, it's as when we encourage one another, don't give up me meeting for the, for the very reason of that we actually get to encourage one another to, to pursue. But again, he's giving the eyes to see actually means that we actually get to see more of him and we get to be have intimate knowledge of the mysteries which therefore again cause us even greater depth even in our worship because the more you know the more you worship the more you know the more you worship uh, okay so the, the only thing that qualifies us is it says for everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. Isn't that a beautiful sentiment? The only thing that qualifies us to go deeper in worship is having a heart that's open. He's after our hearts. He's after our hearts so that we can know him. Then we know him, we worship. We know him, we worship. He gives us more of him, we worship more. He gives us more, we worship deeper. Let's go to Revelations 4, verse 6 and 8. And then there's a reference over to Ezekiel, which I'll read as well. Actually, Rosie, do you have Ezekiel? Can you, do you have your Bible? Can you do Ezekiel um, 118? We don't have to get into the other. Where are you? Where, what was the verse in Revelations? Revelation chapter four, verse six and eight. Is, is, uh, Rosie, do you have Ezekiel? Is that handy? Can you yeah, read it? Four. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. <clears throat> uh, Ezekiel 118. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. Okay. Read that again. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. So living creatures are coming. Okay, so you, what tra what translation are you reading? King James. King James. Okay, so the rings also uh, wheels. Um, right. This is the wheels within the wheels within the wheels that turn every which way, describing. And so John four six and eight six eight and six four, Revelation four six and eight says, and in front of the throne was there was a pavement like crystal. See, crystal sea of glass, and around the throne on each side stood four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. 
Each of the four living creatures had six wings full of eyes all around and under their wings. They worshiped without ceasing day and night, singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of oh, the was and is and the coming. So, okay. So who are we, who's being described in these things? It's, that's a silly question. The creatures are being described, but how are they described? As having, okay, so it's, they're having, they have a lot of eyes. I have never been able to fully comprehend in my primitive mind that to visualize what that looks like. Um, I'm sure to me, it's kind of actually kind of creepy. I think eyeballs and the, the slick, <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't know where to touch or whatever. It's just, however, <laughs> it's my mind, I'm like, oh. however, what that tells me is that so they had eyes to see they had eyes inside outside all around and they are all around the throne room and so that they are seeing every facet of god's character they're receiving everything and so and they never ever stop worshiping not ever so when god says he who has eyes to see i know it's not quite the direct revelation a correlation but i love that whole i picture there is there is a correlation it's not direct but if we have eyes to see like those creatures how much would that change our worship life can can you even comprehend it I, it's to me it's so <sighs> Give me eyes to see. Open the eyes of my heart that I might see you, Jesus. And um, they have so many eyes. They have so much perspective of the Father, of, of all of El Shaddai, of the Almighty, of El Gabor, of the righteous judge, of the line of Judah, of like all of his, all of who he is, Jehovah Rapha. And, it, and even in the, the scripture that, that if we actually fully saw him, then we would be, then we would be healed. Then we would be healed because there is, there's nothing that separates us. When we, when we fully, fully see him as he is, we worship him. We get more of him and we get more of him and we get more of him. So the, the, as the goal that is to, is the only way to to work to go deeper in worship is to spend time with him is to uh, to recognize him there's no magic formula there's no magic flag or paintbrush or anything that is going to give you that tool the only way is to know him and so the i'm gonna actually bring it in um and then so we can have a bit of a discussion. I want to hear some of your, your, your testimonies um, and some of the revelations that you've, you've received so that we can, we can share together, um, like Kim was saying. Uh, but when we consider the names of God, it was to, to know in the ancient Jewish tradition, I mean, there's, they have such reverence for the name of God that they don't even spell it. It's G dash D. And the reason they do that is because to know someone is to possess them and you cannot possess God. And I, I believe that God wants us to possess him. He want, I mean, he's given us his name. And, and so I, I, it's, as, as Jewish, as the Messianic Jews come into this knowledge that they um, will break free from that re religious thought that they can't know. Because what, what that veil does if, is if you can't know his name or you can't even speak his name, you, you're, missing, you're missing the intimacy of knowing him and possessing him. And so Again, coming back to the names of God, um, on I, what I didn't have time for before the before we started this, this teaching, but when I post the teaching again later, um, I do have some homework. Uh, I don't want to call it homework. I just want some exercises and some some 
practical things that you can that will help you and is to know him and so we we've like i i'm actually going to post the names of god uh a link to the names of god devotional that goes specifically with the with the collection the worship flight collection that we have currently um but i also have Another list that I've taken um, directly from the John Paul Jackson, the, the little devotional book. And I'm also going to post a post um, a link to the U a YouTube. Uh, now, one of the free gifts that I was giving for the, the collection was the Names of God CD, which is so powerful. And it is I, I had them for as long as I could. I, I bought everything that I possibly could when streams left Canada. So I bought them all to give to give away with this collection. But there is a link that is on YouTube and I'm going to provide all of those links underneath the video. So in the Firecatchers group, you'll see when it's posted. So you'll be able to get all of these resources. But what we're going to um, do is I didn't print it off. So there's going to be a list. And so it says, can you do this? It says, I praise you for, um, and I worship you because. So you'll have this, there's twofold that this is going to actually, if you, if you do practice this, there's two reasons that this is going to be uh, cultivating a habit of getting to know him. And this is how we do it. So you praise God for what he's done. So uh, I thank you for receiving the comfort today. This week's been just kind of a lot of grief. Um, the, 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 the funeral for that child was horrendous. It was the worst funeral I've ever been to. And I've just been so weepy about it. And um, I just needed the God of comfort. And so I, I, I was comforted in, in, in it. So I praise God for the comfort he gave me because he is Elohe Kol Hanam Shema, whatever that word is, um, the, the great comforter. And so it's recognizing, it's actually training my brain. Um, and I did, I've done this exercise in the past quite quite extensively. It trains your brain to understand that a God is always working and then to correlate that to the name of God so that we can possess that name and so that we can understand. And then we start to come into a deeper worship. And so this is a practical application. The other thing about it is that um, we know that our minds and our, our worship flows from our hearts it goes to our heads and then into the expression of our of our outward being um and if the enemy wants to cut us off he'll 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 cut off our our, our brain uh patterns and our mindsets and he'll and he'll stop the the mindsets there and so i i'm not sure in in a in an anxious mind or like a panic attack this is what's happening is that you literally cannot be thinking correctly um you can't see anything but the problem in front of you and so um i'm i'm not uh, i know that some of some people suffer very de de it's debilitating to them um and so the lord wants to cut that off but there's been even some times when i've been panicked and I, there was a season, period last time when I could not remember one thing that the Lord has done for me. He, I was just panicked about some travel plans. And he, he says, have I not gotten you everywhere you need to go before? I'm like, uh, I, I, I don't think so. I, I cannot remember a single time that you have done anything for me when I've been traveling. And, and it took me back to like, oh, wait a minute. So I had some things written out. And so I could, I could break that cycle. So it helps to, to give us the exercise and the, and the experience to, I praise you for, and I worship you because it correlates these two things. And if you, if you go into the names of God, go deeper with those names, discover all of, there's lots of training out there. Um, I'm just giving you a couple of tools that we're, we're going to get you started um, and some devotional thoughts about the names of God so that we can actually intimately possess those. So there's, so there's kind of this exercise that you'll be able to, to write it out. And then um, there's also an exercise is to, uh, where's my notes here? Uh, 
one other thing that is a fun exercise. Um, David was called a man after God's own heart. He was such a worshiper and he, he, he had such a high value for worship. And if you look at the life of David, he was able to pull in to his time um, something that was, was meant for something greater uh, for the future. So he pulled in some of the new covenant thing, benefits that was really only was scheduled or it was a future benefit for the new covenant. But because of worship, he had such a heart after him that he pulled into his present the things that were some of the mysteries that were reserved. Like he had, he had such intimate knowledge of the Lord. And so some, some of the, uh, just another fun exercise, and this is a challenge. You don't have to, I would encourage you to de do, definitely do that. I praise you and worship you. I praise you for and worship you because exercise and get that kind of um, as established as a, as a practice, but this is kind of fun and it would be fun for the fire catchers to, to write out a psalm, write out our own psalm. So this is kind of, we're moving into um, some creativity. We're, we're writing it down. Rosie's very good with the writing. Um, and there's two ways that we can do it, that you can do an acrostic. This is the way that in the Psalms, David often would do it, acrostic, um, meaning that it was the first letters of consecutive verses make up a word or an alphabet. So if you just want to have like the word worship and then, um, W is, is one thing, and then the O is one thing, or you could go the whole alphabet. That's one way kind of to establish and, and work out some of the creativity. The other way is a answer and response, kind of moving into the I praise you for and worship you because, but making that into a psalm. And then the challenge is this, will you dance it out with your flags for us? Will you actually put it into practice and start to move into it? Um, and uh, I mean, it would be wonderful to, and supportive and encouraging for us to see other people do it, to step out. Who's going to be brave enough? Rosie, you will be. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, and I will be too. I'm going to challenge myself before the next fire catchers that I'm going to post something like that. So that, I, how, okay, so we're going to conclude there. With these exercises, I'm going to have these resources available. Um, open up your your mics and let's let's have a discussion. I'd love to hear your testimonies on worship. Is anything that was that was helpful? It was awesome. I um. As you were talking about um, having eyes to see in, in a place of worship, I, one of the things that um, I experienced just this last weekend when I was at the uh, Glory of Zion School of uh, Prophets conference all weekend were so many facets of that. Um, referencing flags specifically, one of, one of the flags that I have uh, partnered with it coincides with the, the scripture in Revelation 4, and that's before the throne. And um, that is becoming, um, I can't even say that. I was going to say it's becoming one of my favorites, but the minute I change it out, it's, <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hardest part about this. I can't have a favorite. Um, but one of the things that happened for me um, was that I, I, I can't remember exactly which flag I was using. But it was a it was a very first, and as I was worshiping, just worshiping the Lord, in a in a in a brand new setting for me, in a brand new congregation, in this very 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 big place, um, I, I I felt kind of small. But that that was just kind of a more of a personal thing but the, the point I'm trying to get to is there was this place where I began to worship and I just my flags came up this way and all of a sudden the the spirit opened and I could see in a in a spiritual realm I began to see these keys falling and I shared this in my testimony um these keys and I, it was like whoa and um it, and so I think it's a twofold ideology in that um uh 
we're given those who can uh, give me the scripture back it is given to those who can the ability to see not only in a natural realm of how we see the lord in all of his uh, magnificent names but it's also seeing is also a passage or a, a, a portal um, gift that we get to receive in turn to be able to see in, into the realms that are unseen, if any of that is making sense. So it was, it was a capacity to be able to see and to know him in a, in a personal sense, but also an ability to be able to see in a realm of the spirit that I had not had access to before. I think for worship, for me, you know, I, we've just started flags in my church. We started maybe, oh, about a year ago. We had it for a while, then we broke up, then we came back again. And for me, worshiping with my flags, it, it kind of, it's healing my heart from all of the, the hard tragedies that I went through in my childhood and, and the crazy toxic people that were around me it's really starting to heal my heart. And I feel for me, worship is just kind of like God getting in there and mm -hmm. slip it in and work in and, and healing my heart and bringing me up closer to him and opening up the door for him, for me to understand him better. And that is what worship for me is. It's drawing me closer to him, to that intimate place to where we just keep getting closer and closer and closer and it's just, it's a very powerful thing for me, personally. Kim, what you're saying, too, like, it kind of goes, the more you know him, the more you yes. worship The more and you I, know him, the more you yeah. worship him. And I'm not getting that anymore of, you don't know me. He's not saying that anymore because I am getting to know him. And I'm finding out that I get to know him more and more through his word. And I'm starting to get a picture in my head of who God is. And who Jesus is, <clears throat> it's just opening up for me. It's opening up who he is. And I, I want to possess him because I know he possesses me. I want to possess him. And it's, it's, there's such strong intimacy there. And I've never had that intimacy with anybody before. And so it's something new for me. But he's been so patient with me. For, it, it took me 30 years <laughs> just to trust him. And I'm just getting to that point where I'm starting to trust him. And he's been so patient with me and so gentle and so loving that he, I always say Jesus loved me back to life is what I say. He loved me back to life because when I came out of all of that abuse, I was so numbed. I couldn't even feel. And Jesus is just healing that. And he's, he's bringing me back to life again. So, and that's a beautiful thing about worship is it does bring you closer to God. And it's, it, you know, I don't understand flags. I still don't understand them, but I know they work. <laughs> and it's that faith and I don't know, there's something there. Danielle, it's so good to see your face. <laughs> are, are you still worshiping? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I needed to hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not really doing a lot of flagging at the church, but I'm doing it at home and at work when it's quiet. Tell everyone where you work. <laughs> <laughs> I work at a funeral home. <laughs> there you go, Andrea. <laughs> uh, so I had a, an incredible experience this week. Uh, so I've been to two funerals this week. Um, oh. And and my mother's 70th birthday party was at a funeral home. So three I'm times so I've been three, three times I've been to a, a funeral home. Um, what one was the child that I I was I shared on the video that who was hit by a train so uh, he, so tragic and he, there was no mention of God. So the only thing that they he was an incredible kid, um, but the only thing that they can mention is they can only remember. They don't have any hope going forward. And then the other funeral that I went to was with um, 
someone who was in my house church and they, they knew us quite, we knew them quite well. And he'd been sick. He, he got sick. He had early onset dementia. He was youngish. He was young. He was like in just, just 60 actually, but he had gotten sick at 55. And um, the wife, Gay, her name is, she's actually just become a fire catcher. She asked if I would flag at the graveside at the, and um, that was, I wasn't, I wasn't sure about that, that it, but it was so beautiful um, w without music. There was no music there. And I just, I worshiped and I took the before the throne flags that I had and um, worshiped and it was um, and a lot, like lots of great testimony about how it, but it was beautiful for me, for me, it was beautiful to be able to worship and know he is before the throne. Um, and so much like so different, those two funerals um, that there's hope, like it, it's, it's goodbye for now. It's goodbye for now. But you know, when we, uh, we actually, he becomes part of that cloud of witnesses that we're, that, that are cheering us on. And, and so that was an interesting experience to worship with the, at the graveside. Um, maybe that becomes a trend. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> I just keep, I keep on muting myself. I'm muting myself and then unmuting myself. Um, I, does anyone else have comments or we, we I want to, I do really want to honor the time. So we're going to kind of wrap it up, but if you have something you'd like to share, we'd love to hear. It. And then, then um, Rosie is going to pray for us. I guess one of the things I want to say is that it's just so much fun to get completely lost in worship. I mean, you get up there and you just lose yourself. And you're just, you go in just to this completely other place. So I loved how you correlated the living creatures with all of the eyes, with, you know, understanding and revealing the mysteries of God. Because as we go into the mysteries, we've known more and more. And so that just enables us to find that place of worship more and more and to find more reasons to lose ourselves in worship. It was so beautiful. Thanks. That's the key. That is the key. See more of him. <laughs> See more of him. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Have him open your eyes. Yeah. Have eyes opened and we worship. You want to go deep. That's how we do it. It's one of the things I do during worship is I intercede. And one of the things I intercede a lot on is open the eyes of our understanding so that we can see you for who you really are. You know, break down our boxes, break down who we think you are, but reveal to us who you are. So good, Danielle. Yes. Oh, that was so good. That was good, Andrea. That was a great teaching. That was awesome. I needed to hear that. It was like confirmation of what Lord has been telling me. So you did a good job. Thank you. Rosie, can you, can you pray us out? And then I'll stop recording after the, the prayer. Um, with, I, just want to share quickly. I do. Uh, am I doing uh, next month, Andreas? Classroom. Um. Do, uh, do Do you want to? Well, I. <laughs> we haven't. We haven't talked about. Sure. I was just going to throw it out that I. I. The Lord's already given me the title for those who always want to know ahead of time, and so. Okay. Next month, if I end up doing classroom next month, we are going to be doing Bloom Where You Are Planted. What? Okay. Sure. Bloom. Bloom Where You're Planted. So for what that's worth. Um, I suppose I should have done that on the slide, but you, you, last time you asked me, it, so I was ready this time. <laughs> anyway, so Father, we do come before you in prayer with our hearts wide open. Yes. And Lord, I think the last few uh, comments have, have encompassed the prayer for this moment. I pray, Lord God, that for each one of us, 
as we desire and develop a, a necessity to worship you, that you would be so faithful as you always are to open our eyes even more, that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, we would be able to unlock hope, the mysteries of, of, of your personhood, of your faithfulness, of your blessing, that our eyes would be opened into the realm of the spirit to see and be able to discover things about you that we don't even know yet, and that, God, you would be so faithful to reveal things about us. That's, I think that's the mystery of all, is discovering who I am. Because, Lord, in part and, in, in par part and parcel, we get to learn more about you, but in knowing more about you, I know that I discover more about myself. Mm. And so, Lord, I release that opportunity. I release that invitation. I release that RSVP to each and every one of us to come. And I'm seeing, Father, that you're bringing us into a place of, of like the Cinderella bride, where as we seat before you, we are invited in this secret context where everything about us is revealed. One moment we're sitting in front of the, the beauty for the ashes, the, the fireplace, the cleaning, the cleansing, all of the concepts of that story. And the next moment we are swept away with, with the prince of the kingdom. And Lord, I hear you saying the shoe only fits us. Yeah. Where the, in the story that the prince was running amongst in, the, in, his own, um, in his own territory, trying to find the one that the shoe fit, that he could sweep her away and make her his own. Lord, I just, I declare and decree that the shoe fits us. The shoe fits us, Lord. And so as we steal away into that place, I thank you that, Father, you are, you are desperately searching for us. Mm -hmm. You are desperately desiring to, to um, cover our feet, Lord, with, with the glory dust of heaven, that we can come into that place of dancing and worshiping and, and um, mm -hmm. releasing that into every realm that we go, whether it be in a, in a graveside where we prophesy by, by faith that can these dry bones live? And Lord, you say, yes, they can. So I bless each and every one of us, Lord God, in that realm of the spirit. We ask that you would go with us as we go from each other. And we give you all the glory and all we say and do. And it's in your name, the name above names that we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to stop recording now.